right, guys, let's talk the Godzilla anime sequel, which is coming out this May. <clears throat> Excuse me. Uh, so before we talk about anything else, uh, let's talk about the poster. Okay, now we got the original, well, I guess you could call it the teaser poster, which showed, like, basically what we assume was Mechagodzilla's head, like, in some weird, dark cave. <clears throat> Excuse me. And... And you see some people standing pretty much in the foreground, tiny compared to the giant piece of metal. And not much else. It, you know, it inspires the interest, and, you know, it was a decent poster, but just a teaser. Now this, now this is a poster, my lord. <clears throat> I mean, we know from before, if you watch the older videos, I was talking about this, that the movie was, at least in Japan, I think it would be called, like, Battle... Breeding Ground City or something like that. Very odd titles. And I guess you could kind of see that from this picture alone right here. <clears throat> Excuse me. Oh, my God. We get the whole cast right here. Humans and aliens alike. We get a really great shot of Godzilla. And if I'm not mistaken, that looks like our Mecha Godzilla in the background. Now, once again, I'm not going to jump to conclusions and say this is going to be the final design. Maybe this is just a prototype. But, I mean, I we just really have to see this in action because I'm not sure what to make of it. Don't get me wrong. It looks cool. It looks very cool, but it doesn't look like Godzilla. Which, I mean, Mechagodzilla, you know, you kind of think, in general, usually looks a lot like Godzilla. I mean, each each version of Mechagodzilla has looked like the incarnation from that series, including finally with Kiru, they gave Mechagodzilla a long tail, something he's needed since the get-go. So, yeah, I'm not too sure what to make of this. Like I said, you know, maybe it's, it's going to do like a Shin Godzilla-like thing where it can transform into a more Godzilla-looking thing. And the reason I say this is because it's made out of nanotechnology. Now, what do I mean by that? Well, let's dip into the summary. <clears throat> well, that summary, I guess you could say the premise of the movie, which was provided on the Godzilla website. I'm getting it from gamaroisland.com. Uh, specifically speaking, their Facebook page, which I follow religiously because they post all the awesome monster stuff, no matter what side of the world it comes from. So, let's get into it. First things first, the official title now, as far as I'm understanding, is Godzilla, City on the Edge of Battle. That's a lot better than the previous ones. <clears throat> now, here goes the premise. By the advent of the 21st century, much of humanity was dead, have been trampled over by a new master, Godzilla. A select few among mankind took to the stars in a space-faring vessel called the Artidum, is that what it's called in the movie? In search of the promised land, the planet Tau-E, <clears throat> that can stay in human life. This is basically just going over what happened last time. The migration plan fails, the remnants of humanity race decide to return Earth, and fight gets all. I mean, this is this first part just summing up what happened last time. If you didn't see it... If you haven't seen the first one, you should go do that before this one comes out. Because I don't really think I should bore people by going over what happened in the last one. So, let's get to the meat of the new story. The victory is short-lived with, of course, Godzilla Earth appearing. He is the 20,000-year-old, 300-meter-tall version of Godzilla who weighs 100,000 tons. And is probably the most powerful incarnation to date. Much stronger than anything we've ever seen. It could basically flick all the other ones. Now, if you paid attention, and sorry, um, spoiler alert. And once again, in case you didn't watch the first one, but there was an after credit scene in the first one. Where the main character, Haruo, is rescued by, I uh, we assume, is a native person, not an alien uh, it looks like a tribal girl, like wearing like, <clears throat> excuse me, makeup. I mean, uh, like war paint. So continuing from there, 
Peru's rescue, however, is Miana, a member of an aboriginal tribe called the Hotoa. They are the first humanoid people the returnees have encountered. Could they descend from humans? Our tribal god was destroyed by Godzilla. All that we have left are these eggs. Anyone who has tried to fight or resist him has been drowned in fire. <clears throat> the tribe's people say to Haruo, who responds with, This is our last hope of recovering our home. Meanwhile, Bulasaldo. Meanwhile, uh, that name always trips me up. The name of the alien race, the war race. The... Meanwhile, Bilasaldo commander Galagu is elated to discover that Hota's tribe arrowheads, the Hotoa's tribes, sorry about that, tribe's arrowheads are made of a nanometal or self-sustaining metal. It had been developed in the 21st century as an anti-Godzilla killer weapon deployed at their decisive battle fought at the foot of Mount Fuji, but had been destroyed before it could be activated in the form of a Mecha Godzilla. The nanometal was its base substance, and proof the man, uh, excuse me, manufacturing plant can still be used. The film site also confirms that Miana has a twin sister who will be appearing in the film as well. And yes, you can see that around the poster, there are two, not one, native chicks in makeup. Now, if you watched a single Godzilla movie with Mothra, I think we already know where this is going. Uh, twin sisters in native outfits, the mention of eggs, the mention of a tribal god. Guys, this is obvious that this movie is going to have Mothra in it. And many people I see talking about it have already compared it to Godzilla Tokyo SOS. And yes, that appears to be what we are looking at here, guys. Although very different, so now they're, they're aliens, and this Mechazilla is made of nanometal. Which, I guess, explains how Mechazilla is going to possibly fight Godzilla, since the Mechagodzilla we saw in the first movie was A, unfinished, and B, probably closer to the size of the original Godzilla who appeared 20,000 years ago. So around like 300 or so, 400 feet tall. And now that Godzilla is almost a thousand feet tall, and this Megazilla is going to need to grow a lot bigger since he's made out of a nanometal. Once again, I'm not sure about the properties of it, but since it says it's self sustaining, I'm wondering if that means maybe Megazilla can consume things around it and transform it into metal, something of that nature. Or maybe it could even add metal from, I don't know buildings to its own structure make itself bigger because as of right now i don't see how mechazilla could possibly fight against godzilla earth uh powers alone or weapons it's just too small godzilla could once again <clears throat> flick this guy now putting my ridiculous theories aside about mechazilla getting just as big maybe if moth is included moth mechazilla would do like i don't know getting really close to Godzilla's blind side while Mothra distracts. And then you have to have a team battle. Once again, kind of like the battle from Tokyo SOS, but perhaps maybe even more interesting, well, or even more interesting because it's changing so much thing, so many things up. <clears throat> but more interesting the fact that in Godzilla Tokyo SOS, we didn't actually see Mothra and Kiru fight together all that much. In fact, the thing that always bothered me about that movie is the fact that, technically speaking, Mothra and Kiru are only seen in the same uh, frame one time. One time, and that's when Mothra saves Kiru from getting blasted by Godzilla when he's down on the ground. Other than that, no. So, you know, the posters have all three of them together. It's more like Godzilla fights Mothra, then Godzilla fights Kiru. Mothra saves Kiru briefly, and then back to Godzilla versus Kiru. <clears throat> of course, the Mothra lovers do intervene and help, so... Yeah, I'm, I'm assuming we'll see a lot of that here, too, since they're, they mentioned eggs, so... It's probably going to be the classic two eggs. Now, I'm wondering if they're going to say, well, Mothra's a tribal god, but once again, where did Mothra come from? Was Mothra there the whole time, including back in the past, and just didn't want to help humanity? I don't know. And then one last thing that's really on my mind is it was mentioned in the last movie that 
the Bulasado, the warlike aliens, wanted to use Mechazilla to conquer the human race. <clears throat> now, with 20,000 years having passed, and I'm pretty sure many of them have died fighting Godzilla, I'm wondering if that has changed. If they can get Megazilla to work, will they betray humanity once Godzilla's gone? Or they at least think he's gone? Hmm. <clears throat> I'm really curious here. I'm not too sure. But it leaves a lot to think about. So tell me, uh, what do you guys think about this uh, movie? I think it sounds pretty freaking interesting. I think some people were disappointed with the first one because it had uh, actually not that much Godzilla in it. Which has really just become this big, big debate ever since Godzilla 2014. How much screen time will Godzilla get in the movie? Which is funny because I don't know. It seems like we didn't have this problem until Godzilla 2014. And now every single movie that comes out... We are literally counting the seconds when before, I don't know, that had never even crossed my mind until the debate came up because I was 14. So, yeah, bit strange times you live in, right? But I'm still happy to see this movie. Unfortunately, of course, the May 18th is the Japanese release date, which means we in America probably won't see it till, I assume, near the end of this year. And that's being generous. Uh, trying to, honestly, I'm trying to remember when the first one came out. I know it came out, I think, mid to late 2017. 2017, so... And again, Netflix till this year. So, yeah. I mean, just to be completely honest, the movie probably will not be available on Netflix until earliest, I don't know, probably like... October, maybe December of this year. If we're lucky, maybe faster. But Godzilla movies seem to have a long uh, presence in Japanese theaters, so we all know the Japanese are going to get it before we do, and it will probably stay in theaters for a while. So we'll keep an eye out on that, and of course, once it comes out May 18th, we'll try to avoid all the spoilers for it until it comes out on Netflix, where we can all enjoy it, and then tell what you guys think about it. But let me guys, what do you think about the, the the poster, the, you, are you okay with them using a Tokyo West-like plot? Did you want to see something maybe different? What do you think of Mechazilla's design? Because that's what I really want to know what people think. I'm a little, I'm a little iffy myself. I'm very iffy, as a matter of fact. And, uh, and uh, one last thing, I'm really excited, because we're not going to be around the bush. We know Mothra is going to be in here, and I'm just left wondering how... Is this moth going to look? I mean, Godzilla already looks pretty different from what it usually does. Mechazilla looks like a completely different monster, besides the fact that he's, you know, a robot, but doesn't look like any version of Mechazilla we've ever seen. So it leads me to wonder what Mothra will look like. Will Mothra also have a look like kind of like Godzilla? More, I don't know, plant like? Well, we have yet to see. But I think that would be interesting if they could get a look, you know, maybe like Mothra Leo type look to it with the green. I think that'd be pretty awesome. But too early to tell, although, to be fair, it is coming out in about two months, roughly. In fact, oh yeah, just under two months. But uh, I think in the comments, guys, peace.